If we accept there is a cognitive bias in decision making, how can we as risk professionals account for this and help our senior executive make better bias free decisions? Risk Academy's Alex Sidorenko discusses. Originally published for Knowledge at Strategic Risk, www.strategicriskasiapacific.com. The earliest psychometric research was performed by psychologists Amos Tversky and Daniel Kahneman, who later won a Nobel Prize in Economics with Vernon Smith for having integrated insights from psychological research into economic science, especially concerning human judgment and decision-making under uncertainty, Kahneman, 2002. They performed a series of gambling experiments to understand how people evaluated probabilities. Their major finding was that people use a number of heuristics to evaluate information. These heuristics are usually useful shortcuts for thinking but may lead to inaccurate judgments in complex business situations of high uncertainty, in which case they become cognitive biases. Fifteen years later, these findings would become hugely significant to the risk practitioners across the world. Which raises a question, why did it take so long? Implications for risk practitioners The significant role risk perception and research into cognitive biases play in risk management have finally been acknowledged by both ISO 31000 2018 and COSO ERM 2017. Some of the implications include, decision makers tend to miss significant risks, professional deformation, only seeing familiar risks, overconfidence, refusing to consider negative scenarios, post-purchase rationalization, refusing to accept new information, confirmation bias, filtering information according to own beliefs, normalcy bias, refusing to view alternatives and many others. People tend to miss important risks both individually and as a group. Additional biases like group think affect the ability of risk managers to get meaningful risk information during workshops. Professional deformation, only seeing familiar risks, overconfidence, refusing to consider negative scenarios, post-purchase rationalization, refusing to accept new information, confirmation bias, filtering information according to own beliefs, normalcy bias, refusing to view alternatives and many others. People tend to miss important risks both individually and as a group. Additional biases like group think affect the ability of risk managers to get meaningful risk information during workshops. Decision makers significantly overestimate or underestimate probabilities and potential impact risks may have on a decision or an objective. In fact, cognitive biases together with a generally low statistical literacy make people's estimates about impact and probability borderline useless if not deceitful. Making people rate, rank or otherwise qualitative assessment of risks is no better than guessing. In fact, Cognitive biases together with a generally low statistical literacy make people's estimates about impact and probability borderline useless if not deceitful. Making people rate, rank or otherwise qualitative assessment of risks is no better than guessing. Decision makers tend to ignore or dismiss risks even once it is established that they have significant impact on a decision or objective. People have a whole set of biases that prevent them from taking meaningful action. For example, Sometimes we prefer to implement risk mitigations that solve the immediate problem only to increase the overall risk exposure in the long run. Some people also tend to think that inaction is better than action, which often leads to much larger losses. People have a whole set of biases that prevent them from taking meaningful action. For example, sometimes we prefer to implement risk mitigations that solve the immediate problem only to increase the overall risk exposure in the long run. Some people also tend to think that inaction is better than action, which often leads to much larger losses. Irrationality and effect of cognitive biases significantly increase on an empty stomach. Having low glucose in our blood prevents our brain switching from system 1 to system 2 thinking, making any kind of risk discussion before lunch or at the end of the day useless. Overall, research into cognitive biases suggests that people are often irrational when making decisions under uncertainty which significantly reduces the value of information risk managers receive from management. If expert opinions, rankings and ratings are the only or main source of information for the risk manager, the results of risk analysis are guaranteed to be inaccurate. More information about effect cognitive biases have on risk analysis at work and in our day-to-day -day lives is available from the good risk management books, riskacademy.blog. Recommended solutions apparently, 
small doses of electricity applied to Wernicke's area of our brain significantly reduces the effect of cognitive biases on our decision making. Okay, that's obviously a joke. I mean, the research is real, but it's highly unlikely we will be allowed to electrocute people before risk workshops, so here are some real solutions, stop using risk management techniques that primarily rely on human input. Ranking risks in terms of likelihood, consequence, velocity, viscosity and whatever else your external auditor will come up with next, mapping risks on a risk matrix and the similar are guaranteed to produce inaccurate and misleading results, so don't use them for any significant decision. Ranking risks in terms of likelihood, consequence, velocity, viscosity and whatever else your external auditor will come up with next, mapping risks on a risk matrix and the similar are guaranteed to produce inaccurate and misleading results, so don't use them for any significant decision. Use mathematical methods for risk analysis that minimize the need for subjective human input. One way to overcome cognitive biases is to use scenario analysis or simulations when performing risk analysis, instead of traditional qualitative assessments. Quantitative risk analysis helps to present an independent opinion on strategic objectives, assess the likelihood of achieving them and the impact the risks may have on their achievement. But more importantly, quantitative risk analysis helps overcome cognitive biases and significantly reduce subjectivity. Some level of subjectivity still remains, as expert opinions may be required for some range and distribution estimates, however quantitative risk techniques still significantly outperform qualitative risk assessments. Here is an interesting study Douglas Hubbard quotes in his book How to Measure Anything in Cybersecurity Risk. For over 100 unmanned space probe missions, NASA has been applying both a soft risk score and more sophisticated Monte Carlo simulations to assess the risks of cost and schedule overruns and mission failures. The cost and schedule estimates from Monte Carlo simulations, on average, have less than half the error of the traditional estimates. One way to overcome cognitive biases is to use scenario analysis or simulations when performing risk analysis, instead of traditional qualitative assessments. Quantitative risk analysis helps to present an independent opinion on strategic objectives, assess the likelihood of achieving them and the impact the risks may have on their achievement. But more importantly, quantitative risk analysis helps overcome cognitive biases and significantly reduce subjectivity. Some level of subjectivity still remains, as expert opinions may be required for some range and distribution estimates, however quantitative risk techniques still significantly outperform qualitative risk assessments. Here is an interesting study Douglas Hubbard quotes in his book How to Measure Anything in Cybersecurity Risk. For over 100 unmanned space probe missions, NASA has been applying both a soft risk score and more sophisticated Monte Carlo simulations to assess the risks of cost and schedule overruns and mission failures. The cost and schedule estimates from Monte Carlo simulations, on average, have less than half the error of the traditional estimates. Better still, use mathematical methods that don't rely on subjective human input at all. Mark Powell, an expert in mathematical risk analysis methods, says, in maths, we use models for risk analysis but almost always there are terms or variables for which we just do not know what number to use. Most people guess these numbers and hope for the best. Instead, there are three methods that can be used to develop an uncertainty model for these numbers that maximize objectivity and eliminate subjective human input in our risk analysis. These methods are to find the uncertainty model that minimizes the Fisher information, the measure of how much information the model adds to our risk analysis, Jeffries, 1939, find the model that maximizes the information entropy, entropy is a measure of disorder, i.e., the amount of disorder added to our risk. Analysis, Lindley and Savage, 1971, and to find the model that maximizes the expected value of perfect information, the less information the model adds to risk analysis, the larger the FB, Bernardo and Smith, 1995. Fortunately, all three of these diverse approaches give us the same objective uncertainty model for the same problem. Also, fortunately, these objective models have all been tabulated in textbooks for many risk problems we are likely to encounter so we don't have to do all the math by hand. I agree with Mark and highly recommend risk managers look into these. Mark Powell, an expert in mathematical risk analysis methods, says, in maths, 
we use models for risk analysis but almost always there are terms or variables for which we just do not know what number to use. Most people guess these numbers and hope for the best. Instead, there are three methods that can be used to develop an uncertainty model for these numbers that maximize objectivity and eliminate subjective human input in our risk analysis. These methods are to find the uncertainty model that minimizes the Fisher information, the measure of how much information the model adds to our risk analysis, Jeffries, 1939, find the model that maximizes the information entropy, entropy as a measure of disorder, i.e., the amount of disorder added to our risk analysis, Lindley and Savage, 1971, and to find the model that maximizes the expected value of perfect information, the less information the model adds to risk analysis, the larger the FB, Bernardo and Smith, 1995. Fortunately, all three of these diverse approaches give us the same objective uncertainty model for the same problem. Also, fortunately, these objective models have all been tabulated in textbooks for many risk problems we are likely to encounter so we don't have to do all the math by hand. I agree with Mark and highly recommend risk managers look into these. If you ever have to use management input slash guesses, calibrate them before asking for information and provide plenty of sugar. More information on management calibration for the purposes of risk analysis is provided in Douglas Hubbard's books. More information on the effect sugar has on our ability to make decisions under uncertainty is provided in Daniel Kahneman's and Gert Gigerentz's books. More information on management calibration for the purposes of risk analysis is provided in Douglas Hubbard's books. More information on the effect sugar has on our ability to make decisions under uncertainty is provided in Daniel Kahneman's and Gert Gigerentz's books. Probably the hardest recommendation of all, change the decision-making process. Consider applying the decision quality framework developed by Professor Howard Rafa of Harvard University and Professor Ronald A. Howard of Stanford University and made popular by Carl Spetzler in his book Decision Quality. Mark Powell added a few more ideas. Risk managers can only deal with the cognitive biases for the decisions they make. They cannot overcome any in an executive to which they present. A company can train their decision makers to recognize a wide variety of decision pitfalls, Cognitive biases are but a subset of all the possible decision pitfalls. Risk managers then stand a chance of recognizing them in their own decisions. A company can set up a decision review panel, or have mentors assigned to decision makers. Risk managers shouldn't use methods that encourage bad decision making. Risk Academy offers decision making and risk management training and consulting services. Our corporate risk management training programs are specifically designed to promote risk-based decision-making and integrating risk management into business processes. Risk managers all over the world call us in to help sell idea of integrating risk analysis into decision-making and using quantitative risk analysis techniques. Check out most popular course for decision-makers, riskacademy.blog, or our dedicated programs to help risk managers learn the foundations of quant risk analysis riskacademy.blog. We can also help audit risk management effectiveness or develop a roadmap for risk management integration into decision-making, riskacademy.blog. Like this, like loading.